Let's learn about the pluralize filter in Django templates. Now you can use this filter when you have a variable in your context and you don't know whether it's a singular version or a plural version. For example, in the documentation here, we have a variable in our context called num messages. And this is a number which could be one if it's a singular version or it could be two or more if it's plural. So we use the pluralize filter here and the output message can then be changed depending on whether the context variable is singular or plural. For example, the output could be you have one message or if num messages is greater than one, it can be you have two or more messages. So we're using the pluralized form of the word message and the pluralized filter allows us to use and define plurals that we can then plug into our templates when we're displaying these messages. Now there's a few ways of using this filter. We're gonna work through these now. Now I have a Django application in Visual Studio Code here. It has a very simple template that's empty and there's also a view in this application, the index view that has an empty context and it renders out that template. What we're going to do is we're going to add some state to the context and we're going to display that in the template and use the pluralize filter to show the correct version of the word depending on whether it's singular or plural. So let's add to this context a new key called number of points and let's imagine here that we're developing some kind of game application using Django. We're going to set that initially to one and then within our index.html template, we can render that out to the template and we'll see how that looks in the page. And here we have it, a simple template. It contains just the number one, not the most useful website you've ever seen, but we're gonna extend this example. Let's go back to our template and we're going to replace this statement with something else. I'm gonna render an H1 tag on the page and it's gonna say you have scored X number of points. And of course, X is replaced by the value that we have in our context. In this case, it's gonna start by being the value one. So let's save these files and go back to the page and refresh. Now you can see the problem here. This is not correct English grammar. Instead of this, it should say you have scored one point, a singular version of the word. And if we have anything except one, it should say points pluralized. Now we can use the pluralize filter in Django's templates to actually remedy this situation. So let's go back to the template. And before we use pluralize, what we can do is we can solve this with template if statements. And we'll say if number of points is equal to one, in that case, we can use the word point, which is the singular version of that word. Otherwise, we use the else clause within the templates. And in that case, we can render out points here, plural. Don't forget to end the if statement below. And if we go back to our page and refresh, we now get the word point here. And if we change the context variable to two on the back end, when we go back and refresh here, we now get two points. So this is now working correctly, but this code here in the template, this if and else statement, it's not very convenient to do this every time you want to render a plural or singular version of a word. So we can get rid of this code and we're just gonna use the pluralize filter now for convenience. And how we do this is we define the singular version of the word or the root of the word. And in our case, that's just point. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And then to the end of that, we use the template syntax and we reference the variable number of points and then we can apply the pluralize filter to that with this operator here. We say the name of the filter, in our case it's pluralize and by default what that's going to do is for pluralized versions of the word when this variable is two or more it will add an s to the end of the word so point will become points. So let's save that and go back to the page. When we refresh, we see that we get the correct statement here. You have two points. If we change the context variable back to one here, when we go back to the page and refresh, we now get one point. So the pluralize filter takes the value of what we have in our context for any numerical context variable, and it can apply a pluralization based on that value. And that's more convenient than writing a lot of if and else statements. So that's the basics, but it's quite a versatile filter. You can actually define alternative endings for pluralized forms of words. Like I said a minute ago, by default, it adds an S to the end of a word, but you can also define a custom suffix for the pluralized form of a word. Let's see how to do that now. We're gonna change the number of points, and like the documentation, we're now going to reference something called called num walruses. In other words, the number of walruses that we have in our context. So let's change the pluralized form here. And if we go back to views.py, we're gonna change the name of the context variable to num walruses, just so that this is rendering out the correct value. And of course, we need to change the root form of the word here to walrus. 
and I'm going to get rid of this word scored. We're just going to own walruses rather than score points. So let's go to our page and we're going to refresh this page. It says you have one walrus. We own one walrus in this application. And this works exactly the same way as it did before. We've just changed the message. We have the root form of the word that's used when it's singular. But what about when it's pluralized? Let's go back to views.py and change this context to the number two. If we go back to the page and refresh, we now get this version of the plural. It's walrus with an S at the end. Now like I said, by default this adds an S to the end of the word when the number is greater than 1. What we need to do here is define a custom suffix for the plural and we can do that by passing a parameter to this pluralize filter in Django. To pass a parameter we specify a colon and then the name of that parameter. In this case we're passing a suffix for the pluralized ending and that's going to be ES. If we save that and go back to our page, we now get the correct pluralized form of the word. So now in our application, we own two walruses. So that's cool, we can pass parameters to the pluralize filter. And it turns out you can also provide a suffix for the singular ending as well if you need to. So let's have an example of this. Imagine we're using htmx in a project. We're going to set a variable in our backend. This is the views.py context. And we're going to change the num walruses to the number of JavaScript libraries. And because we're using htmx, we're just going to set this to 1. So let's save that and we're going to go back to our index.html and replace the context variable here and reference the number of JavaScript libraries. And I'm going to get rid of this parameter at the end here. And I'm also going to change this message up and I'm going to say you are using and then we'll say X number of JavaScript libraries. Now notice the singular version that we're using here is library. We're going to change this in a minute and you're going to see why that is. Let's save this file and go back to our page. We now have a message saying you're using one JS library. So that's great when you're using HTMX, but let's say now that you have a manager who comes in and he wants you to make this static website using React. So let's go back to our views.py file and we're going to change the number of JavaScript libraries in the application to 5,000. So we now have a node modules folder with 5,000 dependencies. Let's go back to our page and we're going to see what this message says. It now says you're using 5000 JS libraries, but of course this is the wrong pluralized form of the word. We need to add a suffix of IES. So let's go back to the template. And like before, we're going to add a parameter to this IES as the suffix. Let's save that and go back to the page. And now we have the wrong word entirely being used here. We need to get rid of this Y in the middle in order to form the correct pluralized version of this word. So let's go back to the template again and we're going to change this version of the word here. This is the singular version of the word and what we're going to do is get rid of the Y at the end. And now we have a root that we can use to form the correct plural when number of JS libraries is greater than one. Let's go back to the page and when we refresh this we have successfully now got the plural form of that word. But there's a problem here if we go back to the views.py and we change this number back to one. If we go back to the page and refresh, now we don't have the correct singular form of the word. It turns out pluralize can help us with this problem too. All we need to do is go back to the template and the singular suffix is added as a first argument when you have two arguments passed to the filter. And that's just the letter Y in the argument list. And we separate the singular suffix Y from the plural suffix IES with a comma in the argument. Let's save that and go back to the page. When we refresh this page, we now get the correct form of the word. And if we go back to our context and change this to a number that's greater than one, and let's change it here to 100, we nearly have the correct form of the word. All we need to do here, and this is my mistake, is we need to get rid of this space between the singular and the plural. So just a comma separating things, no spaces needed. When we go back to the page and refresh, we now have the correct plural. So now using the pluralize filter, We've passed a suffix for both the singular and the plural form and we're therefore able to correctly display a message to our users depending on the value of this context variable. So that's it for this video. It's a short video demonstrating the pluralized filter that we have in Django's templates. And this can help you when you're writing code in your templates where the suffixes of words change depending on whether it's a singular or a plural form of the word. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.